Welcome to Hood War Stories. In this episode, I'll be discussing the life of Jay Stone. During this time in the 80s, the heavy supply of crack cocaine that flooded the streets of LA helped local gangs grow exponentially in financial strength and manpower. Subsequently, drive-by shootings and other sense of acts of violence over drug turf erupted in the black community in the Crenshaw District, which has among the highest black percentage in LA County. It did just that. It was an area where standing on a street corner can justify a bullet in the back, where knives gave way to Uzi submachine guns. This was a tough atmosphere to raise a child in. Jay Stone was the middle child of three brothers. In 1989, his mother was fatally shot by police during a traffic stop. Jay Stone was only three years old and too young to know what was going on. And for the first seven years of his life, he believed his aunt was his mom. His aunt took on the responsibility of raising him and his older brother Alvin in the same household on 67th Street and 8th Ave in the heart of the rolling 60s. Outside his window, Jay Stone grew up seeing gang members shooting dice, selling drugs, and running fades. At age seven, his aunt gifted him a karaoke machine. Using that mic, Jay Stone began rapping over various instrumentals like Dr. Dre, DJ Quick, and Bone Thugs and Harmony. When he was 13, his older brother Alvin was killed. On March 30th, 2000, Alvin and three rolling 60 members were at a shopping center when they were confronted by two rival gang members. Alvin and his friends quickly left in their car while the two rivals pursued them. The passenger of the rival's car leaned out the window and fired 25 to 30 shots. One of the bullets struck Alvin in the neck, killing him. Jay Stone was very close to Alvin as the older brother. Alvin taught Jay Stone the do's and don'ts, how to program, and how to be a man at an early age. His aunt who raised him also passed away, leaving Jay Stone alone. By the time Jay Stone was 14, he had joined the Rolling 60 Crips, specifically the Dime Block clique. It was there where Jay Stone met Nipsey. This was a pivotal point in both of their lives, and they were fully active during this time. Being outside, hustling, sliding through rival hoods, getting shot at, seeing homies get killed, getting jumped at the malls, wasn't everyday reality for them. After getting kicked out of Washington, he transferred back to Crenshaw High at the height of his gang banging days. Jay Stone was frontlining, and he got the war wounds to prove it. At 16, he got shot multiple times, and shortly after that, he went to jail. When he was released, he returned to his group home, but soon after got kicked out because someone there was hating on him and snitched on him because he brought a girl over. Loss after loss, Jay Stone had to pick up the pieces and get right back up. Nipsey and Jay Stone's friendship ran deeper than the set that brought them together. Their mutual obsession with music convinced them that they both could make it out before the Grammy nominations and victories were even a remote possibility. The two were working late nights sleeping in the studio. Jay Stone and Nipsey would sell fake dope to purchase studio time because obtaining the real thing was impossible at the moment and money was needed immediately. It wasn't any means by necessary approach. During those days, record music was a two-man operation. When one was in the booth rapping, the other would serve as an engineer. Dealing with the police was a roadblock. To properly promote the music once it was completed was another challenge in its own. Because Nipsey and Jay Stone were rolling 60 gang members, there were places in Los Angeles where they couldn't go. They used to pay a couple smokers and homegirls from the hood, a few dollars and some weed, and they'd go post up their posters everywhere. From A-Trade Gangsta Territory, to Inglewood, to the Hoovers. Basically everywhere Jay Stone and Nipsey couldn't go or didn't want to be seen. For an active gang member in Los Angeles, oftentimes they're restricted to their sections. And venturing outside the five to 10 block radius could mean conflict or potentially death. Despite the rivalries, Jay Stone said him and Nipsey's intentions were always rooted in coming up and leaving the nonsense in the streets behind. As the 2000s transitioned into the 2010s, Nipsey's all money and record label became the headquarters for Nip, Jay Stone, and members from the Slauson Boys. Nipsey's output in the early 2010s was frequent, with projects dropping almost yearly. At all money in, Jay Stone could pursue a path other than the streets, but trouble was always nearby. Just about every time Nipsey would release a project, Jay Stone would be back in jail. In jail, before he could even make his bed, he'd have to fight at least three to five rival gang members. It was a painful feeling as he felt he let Nipsey and his loved ones down. But Nipsey helped Jay Stone keep his sanity while he was inside. And the two spoke constantly on the phone, sending positive messages and ensuring how good things would be once he got out. The two would talk about everything from music, business, finances, love, and grief. For anything in life, from running the streets, jail, music, to kids, Jay Stone had Nipsey, and Nipsey had Jay Stone's back. But on March 31st, 2019, Jay Stone was in the studio working on his album, The Definition of Loyalty. He was focused on a song called 19 that featured Nipsey. The two had spoken previously about parts that needed to be re-recorded, 
After completing that, Jay Stone dropped his girlfriend off at work and headed to Nipsey's Marathon clothing store, where he had intended to be early that day. After receiving a call about Nipsey's shooting, he closed his eyes, took a deep breath, and smashed his foot on the gas hard to get there. He was praying, telling himself that Nipsey would recover. They survived too many gang wars for it to end like this. Nipsey's death took a lot out of Jay Stone, as it did for many in their inner circle. He not only had to stomach the loss of Nipsey, but this past March of 2023, Jay Stone's younger brother Darren also died. During the course of a very turbulent past four years, he almost found himself giving up, but has decided to pour his grief, sorrows, and highs and lows into his music. Jay Stone currently stands on his own two feet as an artist, much like how Nipsey envisioned everyone around him. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.